Shalom, who praises the hour, Ba'ashem, 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 Ha'arakal, Kodash, double honors unto the apostles and elders of great millstone of the world, and Shalom to the whole full let. This is Payal of the GMS London Camp, and it's a biblical commentary in the book of Luke, the sixth chapter, and it reads, And it came to pass on the second Sabbath after the first, they went through the cornfields, and his disciples, and his disciples plucked the ears of corn, and did eat, rubbing them in their hands. And certain of the Pharisees said unto them, Why do ye that which is not lawful to do on the Sabbath days? And Yahweh Shai answering them said, Have ye not have ye not read so much as what David did when himself was hungered and hungered, and they which were with him? He went into the house of yeah the most high and did take and eat the shoe bread and gave also to them that were with him which it is not lawful to eat but for the priests alone and he said unto them that the son of man is the lord of the sabbath okay so the heaven Yahweh Shai is the lord of the sabbath he he, he overlooks the sabbath alright and was basically the fact that the, his disciples ate of the corn in the field, right, would be perceived as breaking the law of the Sabbath. But he presented them with, with a rebuttal or like a counter argument in saying that King David ate of something that was only meant for the priests, right? And basically saying, you know, According to what he, what he's saying, the Lord is, is the Lord of the Sabbath. So this is verse six, and it came to pass also on another Sabbath that he entered into the synagogue and taught. And there was a man whose right hand was withered, and the scribes and Pharisees watched him, whether he would heal on the Sabbath day, that they might find an, an accus, accusation against him. And he knew their thoughts and said to them, to the man which had the withered hand, rise up and stand forth in the midst. And he arose and stood forth. And he said, then said Yahweh Shai unto them, I will ask you one thing. Is it lawful on the Sabbath days to do good or to do evil, to save life or to destroy it? All right? So obviously this is building upon the previous um, Sabbath day, all right, this same point, and it's giving it more depth because now you have a man who has some form of um, deformity and basically in him having that deformity, I was shy and wanted to heal him on that day, being the Sabbath, all right? And that's why he had before mentioned he's a Lord of the Sabbath. And, and you know, if you can put two and two together, this example here is... Is really showing you to what to what degree the Lord is the Lord of the Sabbath, all right? So this is verse 10. And looking round about upon them all, he said, Unto the man, stretch forth thy hand, and he did. And he did so, and his hand was restored whole as the other. Okay? And they were filled with madness and communed one with another what they might do to Yahweh Shai. And it's not, there's nothing funny about it, but, you know, they they were basically trying to find any occasion. But he had done good unto a man that, that lacked, and they weren't looking at that as for what it was, but rather that he profaned the day, okay, in their eyes. And it came to pass in those days that he went out into a mountain to pray and continued all night in prayer to Yahweh. And when it was day, he called unto his disciples, and of them he chose twelve, whom also he named apostles. All right? So he chose these men to be sent forth, because that's what the word apostle means, all right? Or the title apostle means. Simon, who's, whom he also named Peter, and Andrew's brother, James and John, Philip and uh, Bartholomew, Matthew and Thomas, James, the son of uh, 
Alpheus and Simon called Zealots, right? Which is also Simon the Canaanite. Because the reason why I was Canaanite basically goes back to the the um the the the, 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 the group that was known as Zealots, okay? Because the word in the Hebrew for for Zealots is kind of kind of iron, I believe, right? Which means zeal, okay, or zealous, right? And that's why you you know some people might say, well, what, what, was his name Simon the Canaanite, or was his name Simon the the Zealots? No, he, ultimately, uh, you know, it depends on is Simon the Zealot more or less, all right? And Judas, the brother of James, and Judas Iscariot, which also was the traitor. And he came down with them and stood in the plain, and a company of his disciples and a great multitude of people out of, Ju- of all Judea and Jerusalem, and from the sea coast of Tyre and Sidon, which came to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. All right? And they that were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were and they were healed, all right. And the whole multitude sought to touch him, and there went virtue out of him and healed them all. See, see, <laughs> and I know I mentioned this before because it was even going on in the back of my mind. Um, where I'm a four made mention before I made mention of um, the the woman with ish, the issue of blood for twelve years. How she knew that she had faith that if she touched the Lord that she would be healed. And his virtue left him and that's how he knew that he'd healed someone. Now if you think about it, when he when he delivered when he um right after he um healed the man around they all went crazy. So hey, well that wasn't right over, that was that was a couple of days. But you know, it's just um let me not even delve into that because I'm, I'm just doing too much. But this is the point. Let me read again. So, And the whole multitude sought to touch him, for there went virtue out of him and healed them all. all right? So basically his energy, all right, they could take on his energy, all right? and that would be his virtue leaving his body. And he lifted up his eyes on his disciples and said, Blessed be ye uh, poor. For yours is the kingdom of Yahweh. Blessed are ye that hunger now, for ye shall be filled. Blessed are ye that weep now, for ye shall laugh. Right? Um, So let me read this again, actually, from verse 20. It says, And he filled up his eyes, and he lifted up his eyes and his disciples, on his disciples, and said, Blessed be ye poor, for yours is the kingdom of Yahweh. Blessed are ye that hunger now, for ye shall be filled. Blessed are ye that weep now, for ye shall laugh. All right? Which basically is, in all these sayings that the Lord is saying, is faithful sayings of hope. All right? Of hopes where we lack now that the Lord will fill up. All right? In, 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 <laughs> in a very... Um, Immediately, basically, as soon as possible. Right, blessed are ye when men shall hate you, and when they shall separate you from their company, and shall reproach you and cast out your name as evil for the Son of Man's sake. All right, so if we suffer for Yahweh Bar Shemayah sake, all right, that's that's a blessing, man. All right, because the Lord chastiseth those who He loveth. Rejoice ye in that day and leap for joy. For behold, your reward is great in heaven, for in a for in a like manner did the fathers unto the prophets. Right, and this is this that's the job of a prophet. A prophet goes through hardships. Alright. But woe unto you that are rich, for you receive your consolation. Alright? And you can see that right now, as of right now. You have a present controversy with uh, Meek Mill. Who basically uh, filmed <laughs> some little some young Jake kids hustling? They gave twenty dollars, and then told them to keep their hand out of his car. 
but he's preaching about being a oodles noodles baby and you know he's you know um state of america whatever song he made but he took he got the bag right he got paid off he got his consolation even though i heard that those um kids they're hustling they're always taking advantage or whatever but you know is with his um with showing his backstory isn't coming from a sincere place it's coming from a place that's advantageous onto him, all right? And I I was even reasoning with someone I know, and they'll they'll give me more information that really just smeared his whole credibility, okay? But that just shows you, as I read, this is verse 24, but woe unto you that are rich, for ye have received your consolation. Woe unto you that are full, for ye shall hunger. Woe unto you that laugh now, for ye shall mourn and weep. Woe unto you when all men shall speak well of you for so did the fathers so did their fathers to the false prophets by saying to you sorry on this last one so basically if you're doing well it's you got hard times coming all right and like 2021 the year that we're moving into all right <clears throat> is looking like it's gonna be one for the records especially in the uk Dealing with the Brexit, all right, and we had today's V Day, all right, the first vaccination, basically got um administered today, so this is this is a pivotal moment in history, okay, and a, a turning point in moving towards the RFID chip being the mark of the beast, all right, um, so reading on it says. Woe unto you when all men shall speak well of you, for so did their fathers of to the false prophets. But I say unto you which hear, love your enemies, do good to them which hate you, all right? Bless them that curse you, and pray for them that despitefully use you. And unto him that smiteth thee, oh, uh, thee, smiteth thee on the one cheek, offer also the other, and him that take away thy cloak, forbid not to take thy coat also. All right, and this is basically, this is one of those kind of scriptures that off put Jake in the world to, from the Bible, because I'll say like, oh, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not feeling the book that's telling me to, you know, let my enemy slap me in the face and to give him the other cheek. No, this, this is, this is there for the sake of those that are in the knowledge in the faith, right? of near kindred okay because if you continue as i say an eye for an eye leaves everyone blind right you know it does say that in the law that an eye for an eye burning for burning etc etc cutting for cutting etc but if if everyone goes about doing that you'd have situations like what happens in gang activity all right where you have gang members basically killing each other off like chicago for example Chirac, them guys are killing each other till there's no one left, and it's they all have the own understanding of it's it's it keeps going until you're the last man standing, basically. So no one's really gonna win in that situation because it's just a never ending cycle. But now when you um turn, you know when you your your cheek gets smitten, smoke, and you turn and um give them the other cheek. Basically, what he's saying is that you you put your best foot forward with someone. Don't be fearful if they take advantage of you to get to put forth your best foot. Sorry, let me say it again. If you put your best foot forward with someone that did you wrong, right, and they they need that opportunity again, don't be scared to do it again. All right, that's basically what he's saying. Okay. And if you if you aid someone in some form, don't be scared to do it again. Because at the end of the day, hey, a righteous man falls seven times, but get it up. Everyone's going to fall. We've all fallen short of the glory, all right? So there has to be room for mercy. You have to be forgiven, all right? So um, let me read on. It says, um, Give to every man that asketh of thee, and of him that taketh away thy goods, ask him ask them not again so if someone does you wrong don't ask them of it again just let it be all right let it just it is where it is all right um because 
Remember, it does say in the book of Ecclesiastes, cast thy bread up, 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 upon the waters, and after many days it shall return unto you. So basically, the Heavenly Father, he will repay you for your shortcomings, basically. He will, he will, he will line your pockets if need be, if that's how it's going to come back. However, you know, the, the, the same exact means of what you've lent out may not return back onto you, but it may not even return onto you at all. But just do it as a show of good faith, all right? So this is um, verse 31, so it says, And as ye would that men should do to you, do ye also to them likewise. And that's the golden rule, what, what is known as the golden rule. Treat others how you would like to be treated. All right, and that's something that uh, every man in his faith should always strive for. Okay, even though it's very hard, you know, we're, we're in the flesh and we get weak sometimes, you feel into dislikes or whatever, the clashes of personalities, all that different type of stuff. But at, at the end of the day, you've always got to treat people with the level. And at the same time, remember, some people may not take may not do some of the things, expect some of the things you expect, right? You might be more outgoing than the other person, but it doesn't mean that they're not, they're not showing you respect, right? So anyway, it says, um, for if ye love them which love you, what thank, what thank have ye? For sinners also love those that love them, right? And if ye do good to, the, to them which do good to you, what thank have ye? For sinners also do even the same. So basically, you know, this ain't about just liking people for liking, that like you for... Um, this ain't about liking the people that like you. That's that's pretty straightforward. That's what sinners do. It's about dealing with people that have a, a, a dislike to you and still putting your best foot forward regardless, all right? And that's really a character. That's definitive of character, all right? Because really, you know... Integrity, character, those are things that when no one's looking, you're still the same person, all right? You ain't doing it for the sake of people's eyes. You're doing it for the sake of your character and integrity, all right? So it says, um, verse 35, But love ye your enemies and do good, and lend, hoping for nothing again, and your reward shall be great, and ye shall be the children of the highest, for he is kind unto the uh, unthankful and to the evil be therefore merciful as your father also is merciful and that's basically where it all falls down to having great mercy as your father has our heavenly father has mercy because all you got to remember I believe it's in this book the parable that speaks of the um, the wicked servant who basically had a debt with his master of a, of a great sum and basically his master wanted it and he could see that he couldn't pay it. And he, he basically wrote off his debt and freed him and basically had him in prison and let him free. But then as soon as he was free, he found a man that, that same man that was a captive, found a man that owed him a, a lesser amount and threw him into prison. And when the master heard, he, he basically, you know, came back and was a judge between that man and the man he put in prison, all right? If, you know, Lucy paraphrasing the story. So, you know, to have to have mercy is, is a big thing, all right? Because the Lord will come back and avenge that um, if you lack mercy. So verse 37, Judge not, and ye shall not be judged. Condemn not, and ye shall not be condemned. Forgive, and ye shall be forgiven. Given, it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, and shaketh together, and running over. <laughs> Man, let me read that again because, I mean, the Bible, man, is is some poetry, man. The Heavenly Father's got away with words and, and his son definitely has got away with words as well. So it says, verse 38, Give and it shall be given unto you good measure, pressed down, pressed down and shaken together and running over. Shall men give into your bosom? For with the same measure that ye meet, with all, it shall be measured to you again. Right? So if you give a lot, you're going to receive a lot. And he, and if you give little, you're going to receive little. And he spake a parable unto them. Can the blind lead the blind? Shall they not both fall into the ditch? The disciple is not above his master, 
but everyone that is perfect shall be as his master. All right, and that's what we are to be as. And why beholdest thou the mote in thy brother's eye, but perceivest not the beam that is in thine own eye? So if you see your brother has a mote like a splinter, a chip of wood in their eye, don't be looking at that, that you know, the eye and saying, yo, look, he's got a splinter in his eye. You don't even see it. Now you got a, you got a bloody beam hanging off your eyelid, man. Basically saying, watch yourself, all right? Re pondering your own problems and get right and then ultimately aid your brother in his shortcoming as well all right either how canst thou say to thy brother brother let me pull out and then see he's gonna break it down Ivan, how canst thou say to thy brother brother let me pull out thy moat the moat that is in thine eye when thy thyself when thou thyself beholdest not the beam that is in thine own eye Thou hypocrite, cast out the first, cast out first the beam out of thine own eye, then shalt thou see clearly to pull out the moat that is in thy brother's eye. All right. So basically, don't be a hypocrite. Get your get yourself right, and then get you get everyone else right around you. All right. For a good tree bringeth not forth corrupt fruit, neither doth a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. For every tree is known by his fruit, his own fruit. Yeah, like an apple tree. How would you know an apple tree is an apple tree? By the fact that it bears apples. How would you know a pear tree is a pear tree? By the fact that it bears pears. These fruits do not come out from... You don't have a tree that is a fruit. Like it just bears mixed fruit. You don't have that. Apple tree is going to bear apple tree, pear tree, pear, orange, orange. All right. So as with that point being said... A tree is going to be known by its fruit, and so will a man be known by their fruit. All right, so verse 44, sorry. For every tree is known by his own fruit, for of thorns men do not gather figs, nor of a bramble bush gather they grapes, all right, because those those bushes, trees, then or plants, they're not known for bearing that fruit, all right. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is good, all right, and within our heart is gems, jewels and gems, uh, riches, right, that we basically, you know, drop jewels and gems to you brothers that are listening, and basically, that's ultimately is which is good, right, because the most I said he's going to make up his jewels, right, so it says, and an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil, right, for of the abundance of the heart his mouth speaketh. So whatever's in your mind, your mouth is gonna speak. There is, you know, you can slip. You know, there there is times where you slip with the tongue and say things that you don't mean with your heart. But for the most part, if you hear a man saying something about ten thousand times over and over again, I mean, he's making it known where he's coming from. All right. And why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Whosoever cometh to me. And hear if my sayings and do with them, I will show you to whom he is like. All right, and that's why, again, you had uh, the Lord say that many there be that say, Lord, Lord, you know, and I will not hear them. And you know, basically, when they call upon His name, He is. I'm gonna hear them, and that's because they they they're not doing that which He requires of them. All right, to show their faith, they're just called in now because they're the five foolish virgins, more or less. Right, he is like a man which built the house and dig deep and laid the foundation on the rock, and when the flood arose, the the stream beat vehement, vehemently upon the house, and could not shake it, for it was founded upon rock. All right, so if you follow the, the words of this book, basically you'll be likened unto a man that bought a, that built a sturdy foundation, right, upon a rock, right, and that rock really being Yahweh Shai being a cornerstone and then Peter being that rock. That's why he's Simon Peter. That's why he was nicknamed Peter, which goes back to Petra, which means rock. Because he's that foundation, the house of David, right, which the elect is built upon. But he that heareth and doeth not is like a man that without foundation 
Throughout foundation building house upon the earth against which the stream did beat vehemently and immediately it fell and the ruin of the house was great. Right? So with that I pray